first we need to learn the difference between programming and coding. A computer program is a can be thought of as a set of instructions and sometimes that gets thought of as a set of codes and so some people you might think that coding is programming. Coding is the part of taking a computer program or a list of logical instructions, the list of things that you need to get done in order to complete the whole would be the computer program. The details of how it's typed in are the computer language that's coding. Like if I'm sitting this, I just, I'm using this example that I just heard by computer scientists gave, it's a good, it's a good example. Um, a computer language would be like English. So you can know how to speak English, but that doesn't mean that you can write a novel. Someone could tell you a story and you could write it down. So that's the coding, the writing it down of the story, but the story itself is the computer program. And it doesn't matter how you write it down, whether it's in Arabic, French, English, the story is pretty much the same, you know. Human loves human, babies, whatever. All the stories are the same. There's like six stories. There's only 10 people in six stories or whatever. <laughs> 10 prototypes of people in a story. Okay, so, but specifically, there are certain concepts that you need to know that are helpful to know if you're gonna communicate with other people about programming. And because it's good to be able to communicate, obviously you can learn to program just like you could, you could sit down like a musician, like, and find out that you, you're able to play any stringed instrument or whatever. However, it's easier to be able to communicate with other people who play stringed instruments and ask them, hey, how do I make this sound nice? Same thing with computer programming. Hi, Lewis, how do you fly? You're cute. It's a little itty bitty little baby fly. Little baby. Yeah. Anyway, um, I like insects. Here's some, here's, here's some computer programming concepts. Assignment. In computer programming, generally there are variables. Variables will hold values. A variable might be represented by a symbol, such as a letter. This is a symbol representing a variable. We're gonna call it A. We're gonna give it a value. Okay, whoop, no! See, I don't like that. I just killed something because it looked like a piece of dust floating around. I really don't like that. I know I'm killing lots of things here that I'm not knowing about, but that one I just killed. Okay. A equals one. We made an assignment. <laughs> the right to left thing, I'm going to do everything from sort of an English speaking algebra perspective, I guess. In this case, you can think of it like that. You put in one into A. We're assigning the value one, a numerical literal value one. We're putting it in the value A. So if we had a command to see what's in the value, what, what A is, we could say, hey, what is A? That's a function. We're going to throw A. We're going to say, what is A? And it's going to spit out on our screen. It'll say, oh. screen would then turn out a one. Okay. So then if we said that B equals A plus A, this is an expression that has a value that needs to be resolved. I mean, we're going to use logic here, one, one. Basically, these get added, these get replaced, those get added together, the value two gets assigned to B, so now if you were to ask it what B is and what A is, first it's going to print out 2, and then it's going to print out 1. In this case, A and B are symbols. They're symbols that represent a stored value, sometimes called a variable. These are symbols that represent a stored value. When we say that A equals one, 
this is called an assignment. We're assigning the value 1 to A. An assignment in many languages is in this form. The value, the symbol for the variable that's going to receive the value of the assignment will be on the left generally. There are lots of languages. In this case, on all the languages I'm going to speak about, well, I'm going to try not to speak about languages because that's what I'm saying. Languages are coding. Once you learn to program, they can present you with any language and it'll only get better. Okay? If you can program, if you can program, if you can think about the steps of a program, a computer program, if you can kind of think about how it all is all going to work out. If you're the type of person that is mechanically oriented, like to fix engines, or at least can, you know, deduce this thing's clinking, this thing it must be this, you're you can program. Okay, you've got that. You've got it. It's just a matter of learning the symbols. And the way you get because you're a person that works with your hands, write it down. Work with your hands. Don't type it in, write it down. Okay? You'll learn it a lot faster. Maybe you don't like math. Okay, if this turns you off, don't try it. <laughs> I mean, but it might turn you on. If you just try one little thing, and that's part of what I want Karen Ware to do. Because I wanted, I, I have started on it several times, just a little box that someone can write simple, 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 simple little programs, regardless of language. In fact, maybe make up a silly language that's intentionally not. Whatever. Okay, let's get back to it. A is a symbol. This, this is a type of statement called an assignment statement. You can tell because it has an operator. The operator is an assignment operator. In this case, an equal sign. Two bars over themselves. So, so far we know the operator equals. That's an assignment operator. On the left side, on the left side it takes the destination. And on the right side it takes a value. Now the value can be either be a literal, like it could be, a literal might be the number one. A literal might be the string Joe. In this case, I'm writing it with quotation marks around it to show that these, the reason you put quotation marks around a string literal is so that the compiler that's going to take your coding and create things to carry out your instructions, it's going to translate it into little tiny instructions, little bits, bits. An assignment requires a, a series of CPU instructions, and then we'll get into machine code someday maybe. Uh, I think it's cool to start with machine code because I did, but and I, so therefore I I know what the intricacies and and the hassles of doing eight bit programming and then sixteen and then twenty four and then thirty two. I've never done machine code sixty four, but same same difference. Um, once you, it's cool to if you're into programming at least once in your life delve into the actual assembly or machine language programming and deal with the hardware yourself and learn what uh, it'll help you uh, write more efficient code even on the on the bigger uh, languages. And then my other advice would be not to do that. Unless you're really interested in the geeky in the geeky aspects to it, you'll end up like this. Unless you want to be a computer scientist. I'm not a computer scientist because I'm not... Uh, science is a discipline that's... I'm more of a creative person. Uh, science is, can be creative, but you've got to have some discipline to it. And so uh, I'm not really much of a scientist. I am fascinated by all the ins and outs. Uh, but... Perhaps you're interested in, in getting something done, writing applications, uh, helping people do their job faster. Well, then don't worry about the machine language. Use the high-level languages like, you know, I'm not, I, I can teach you to program. I can show you how to program. Uh, but I am not a software engineering person. I mean, there are disciplines and huge, I mean, human beings write software that's so complicated. It would be impossible for one person to sit down and, and even conceive of it. Teams like NASA and SpaceX and all these guys, they're writing so much code, they're millions of lines of code. I and mean, that's, that's impressive. And if you want to learn that, I mean, there are schools that you can get that from a vocational type training. Uh, you can learn uh, agile uh, development practices and you can go right into a team, make some money, help some people out. Um, you know, I'm, I'm just, I am a team player for short periods of time. I just, you know, I get distracted. So I have worked in those environments and I, I joked about them. But now I can see their value. <laughs> so, assembly language is cool. Machines are cool. Dealing with hardware is awesome, but we're talking about programming. All right. So, we have 
Our first operator is an assignment operator. In this case, we're going to draw it as an equal sign. We're going to, an assignment operator puts a value into a memory or location that's going to be represented by a symbol, a variable. The way that a computer program can, the way the compiler, a compiler is a separate computer program that compiles your instructions into machine instructions. So it would take a, let's say the C programming language or the F sharp programming language, any programming language you've ever heard of is read by another computer program and it reads your symbols of what you typed in and then it translates that into what you meant so that the machine can understand a bunch of numbers. And the way that it knows when it's reading from left, in this case, I'm talking about compilers that read from left to right, because in English we read from left to right. Uh, so they start reading and they'll see, they'll, they'll see Joe. Let's say the word, they see J-O-E, all stuck together like it's one word. Without quotation marks, without quotation marks, this is a symbol for a variable. If it has quotation marks around it, that means... When it sees this quotation mark, it means, okay, there's a string literal coming up. None of this is variables. This is the string literal that Joe wanted to record. You know, whatever it is, it's a, it's a string of letters. If it hits a number, it knows that it's a, it's a numeric literal. If it starts with the number, with any number, 0 through 9, or a negative sign, or a plus sign, <laughs> then it's a number, right? Because if it's negative 200... That's not a string literal, there's no quotation mark. It's not a variable because there's no letters. It's numbers. So in that case, if this was negative 200, it knows this is the value negative 200 and it puts it in whatever thing there. The side on the right side of the assignment is called an expression. It's an expression reduces into a value. An expression is like a formula. A simple formula might be value zero or one or the string literal Joe, an expression that has multiple elements in it would have other operators. So, for instance, an expression could be the literal could be two plus four. So it could be a equals two plus four. So it's reading along. It says, "Oh, got a variable. We're going to assign it. So everything until I get to the end of the line or whatever is going to be the expression. So it sees a number. Okay. Well, now my number's two. And it sees an operator. That's an operator called add." Oh, and then it sees another number, 4, so it adds it to 2. It's reduced down to 6. Now all of this is 6, and then it assigns it into A. So, what have we learned today? We have learned that the assignment operator, in this case, looks like an equal sign, but on the left side of the assignment operator is going to be a variable name, symbol, variable symbol. And on the right side of the operator is going to be an expression. An expression reduces, and when we do compiler design, I'll show you how to compi design compilers. This reduces, on the right side, will reduce down to a value that can be assigned. Because an assignment, if you're doing an assignment, the right side has to, has to reduce to a value. It can't be an expression. An exp if you tried to store an expression, that would be sort of a situation where you were trying to store a function functions we'll get to that later i need three hundred dollars i need three hundred dollars today please please donate three hundred dollars <laughs> i got no i got no way for anyone to see how much has been donated or what day it is today is wednesday today is thursday september 22nd it's the first day of autumn in the northern hemisphere i am actually in shawnee oklahoma in potawatomi county oklahoma we are 35 miles east of oklahoma city we're about 30 miles east of Tinker Air Force Base, near Oklahoma City and Midwest City. Uh, that is the county line road right there. On the other side is Lincoln County. Lincoln? Noble? Lincoln? <laughs> I should know that. Man, I'm kind of talking about being in politics. I need to learn my counties are in Oklahoma. <laughs> well, that's the county line road. Potawatomi County ends right there at the road, so that's Meeker. I kind of call this Meeker because we're closer. There's a town of Meeker's just right over here. It's pretty cool. Um, I don't know how many people, like 2,500, 5,000, 10,000. It's, it's a small town. Uh, Shawnee's about 70,000, maybe 30,000. I was going to relate it to other towns in Oklahoma. That won't help you. It's about like Auckland. No. <laughs>
And we're going to see you guys in Australia someday. Both sides. I want to go all over. I want to spend months in Australia someday in my life. I like the whole idea of Australia. I really like Steve Irwin. Miss Steve Irwin. So. All right. Let's go catch a fish. Oh, we didn't catch one this time, but that's okay. 